one may know him as the father of the fish, the Bibles, and that's not. I work on Mopilis the mostly on port, but uh, I am my own sister out, so I, I not only work on port, but I, own, I work on the holiday on also on and some usual and demons uh, I use to work. A couple of years ago, uh, a customer called me. Uh, he had initially uh, uh, a central office with, uh, with a Windows server. Uh, he called me, well, I opened a new office 200 kilometers far, but I have a problem with the network because if I go in Windows native, in uh, Windows neighborhood, I cannot see the central office. Uh, I see, well, it doesn't work uh, this way, it's not connected. Uh, so, uh, you have to connect uh, the offices, you have to, to create a, a kind of connection. Uh, so, really, we propose a solution based on uh, VPN, uh, based on OpenBSD as, as a VPN concentrator and firewall. And uh, uh, both offices uh, are connected to uh, central Windows server in the web form. Uh, the main problem uh, initially was uh, uh, we have to decide uh, which VPN software we will use. Uh, we wanted to use obviously as a firewall because we had deployed uh, many others uh, to other customers. We could use uh, ITD. But uh, actually, uh, uh, well, it has some problems with uh, user and password authentication uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, it requires uh, uh, Windows 7 uh, for the, the client part. And uh, by the customer, we, we have Windows XP, Windows Vista 7, uh, Mac OS, uh, and all kind of other stuff, so it was impossible to use. That was OpenVPN. But uh, uh, I don't like it that, that much because uh, to do some accounting you have to create uh, some scripts. Uh, then uh, they were thinking uh, also about uh, uh, maybe in the future to use uh, an iPad to connect it with uh, their main software. So I. I'd like to have a, a solution which will be uh, on every, quite every platform. Then we do was a pop job, which is important on MSD, but uh, uh, it's quite slow. So, uh, we're trying to search for another solution. Uh, there were uh, an initial import of NPPD, which is a PPTP and LTTP daemon. Uh, quite uh, a month before uh, this project started, uh, there was a uh, zipport was uh, only in source for former, it not yet linked to the build. Uh, it had uh, uh, some little problems like uh, there was no documentation uh, and uh, all comments in source code were in Japanese, uh, so <laughs> it was a little tricky to, to debug uh, some problems. Anyway, uh, and the main features uh, uh, is a PPPP and family daemon which is support PPTP protocol, HTTP protocol, and PPP over address. Uh, at the moment, I, I use, uh, currently use uh, PPTP and HTTP and never use PPTP over address. Uh, I can authenticate users using a local file or uh, a remote radio server. Uh, then, uh, uh, the uh, main developer created also a uh, kernel interface which is Hypex, uh, uh, which is used uh, uh, to accelerate uh, uh, back forwarding between user land and kernel space, uh, but uh, it's uh, an optional. It's enabled uh, via uh, sys control and it's, it's an optional. Okay. Then you can use a uh, combined uh, with tool interface or PPPX interface. The main difference is with the uh, tool interface, you have one interface uh, for all your users. With PPPX, you have uh, 
any you out, uh, the demo now creates an interface for every user that connected. So if you have a hundred user connected to you in a config URL, you will have a hundred PPPs uh, devices. It was initially developed by EEG, which is Internet Initiative Japan. And the first uh, appearing in OpenSD 503 will be released next month. Uh, anyway, it was uh, for about a uh, uh, couple of years uh, in, in, in source code. So uh, I started uh, working on it and using production, uh, even if it was not yet linked to build. The main configuration file is under uh, itc.mpd.conf. Uh, the configuration from our format has changed a lot during development. Uh, initially, it was an in style uh, config file. Uh, now, it was uh, something more like GPD or PF uh, syntax, or so something more uh, BSD style. This is simple configuration. We have a uh, notification using the local user file, uh, definition of the protocol and the, the bind of the interface you will listen, and then the LCP uh, um, parameters like pool address, uh, DNS server, and to uh, win server, and all the stuff you want. And then the binder in the interface uh, you will use, or in this case you will use PBX interface. Uh, it will automatically create a PBX0 interface with uh, this address uh, and then uh, the, every user will uh, uh, recreate uh, PBX1, PBX2, PBX3 and so on. The user file, uh, uh, the local main developer has changed to use uh, uh, getcap as a uh, user uh, file format. So uh, you have uh, the user and then uh, the attributes uh, which is the password uh, and in this case as a frame to be address. Uh, there is uh, a bug in uh, oh, previous. Unfortunately, there is a bug in let's see, get careful. At least in OpenBSD, I don't know with other BSD I haven't tested. That you cannot have uh, a, a value with a corner inside. So a, a password with a corner inside won't work. Because it splits. Uh, by colon and put one worker. I read that in uh, uh, get there are some tricks with uh, 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 by writing backslash something uh, to escape, but I haven't tried that yet. Um, and a more advanced configuration uh, is requiring a, a radio server. And you can define a, a, a radio server for authentication purposes and a, a, a different radio server for uh, accounting purposes uh, to register uh, all information about uh, past connections. Uh, then you can use, uh, if you want, F2P, which is more secure protocol, but uh, it relies on IPsec, so it has uh, all the IPsec crypto uh, over. Uh, infrastructure, we see oh, it's a bit slow. Um, with this project, uh, in the end, I choose uh, PPTP because uh, I tried that to be with a uh, 3G connection because uh, uh, they have a laptop and they connect to the main software from everywhere, but it has to be with 3G connection, at least uh, in Italy, it's not yet very fast. Uh, as we stop, uh, you have to set up uh, F2P with uh, the previous definition to, so you get point to the uh, database of users. Then you have to, to configure uh, ipsec.conf because uh, it relies uh, on the standard ipsec stuff. And obviously you have to change PF to filter uh, the right port. Uh, ipsec. This is a access um, configuration. Uh, you have to define your public IP address, which uh, uh, if you are behind night, is not the public interface, public IP address of your interface, but it is public IP address of your router. So uh, it's a bit tricky, main, mainly because of some Windows 
but uh, I will do later. Uh, uh, if you have, for example, uh, your your firewall which has a public interface, uh, which has a ten dot zero dot zero dot one, and your router have a hundred ninety nine dot nine dot eight here, you have to to change your router IP address because uh, uh, Windows has some bugs and uh, it take it try to connect to the internal. Uh, IP address, so it, it doesn't it doesn't work. Another strange thing is that uh, when you define uh, the crypto setup, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, made to define a lot of channels because Windows XP has uh, some defaults, Windows Vista has some other, Mac OS has some other, and to change that in the uh, the client part is not, not so easy because you have to, to change uh, uh, in the registry default values of crypto uh, defaults. Uh, okay, then you have to configure PF to pass uh, the stuff. Then you can use uh, uh, NPD uh, as a counterpart to that, in this line, which is NPD control to uh, monitor the status of your, your, your VPN. Uh, you can see the uh, username and the realm, uh, the concentrated interface, which will be tune or PBX uh, 1, 2, etc. The, your assigned IP address, the protocol, the public IP address, and uh, some information about uh, 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 packets, uh, uh, which is which is which passes through the VM. All this information, if you use like a radius accounting, are, are, are saved on the radius the database. So uh, you can see in the past uh, at uh, a specific time uh, who was working on VPN, uh, how many bytes has downloaded, uh, and uh, if you want, uh, if you can kind of, uh, uh, for example, if you use with V over Adorant, you can. Uh, kind of billing uh, related to uh, downloaded packets uh, or something like this. Uh, if you use PPBX, so you have uh, your interface, and on the description you get to, of the interface you, have, you get your user, uh, which is connected to, to this interface. So by simply typing in if config, you can see which user are connected uh, on the VPN. Uh, then there is a, a PPX group which uh, groups all PPX uh, interfaces, so uh, in, PA, in PF uh, you can uh, filter uh, for uh, interface groups PPX, so you can, uh, for example, um, do traffic shaping or whatever on VPN. Uh, maybe in the future there will be a more fine grain in the integration with PF to be able to a filter for a group of users or something like this. I haven't yet decided how. Oh, yeah. If you use HTTP, well, HTTP control is, is your very bad friend. So you can see uh, all the flows uh, and the association. Then, uh, well, if you get radius, uh, you get uh, um, probably a, a backend with a database. Uh, database is a uh, radius database, uh, on, at least on free radius is four or five tables, so it's quite simple to write a uh, user interface so to uh, grab some uh, 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 GPL or BSD like uh, radius admin, dialog admin interface and to change uh, just a little to to be able to create users, notify uh, users, uh, to see how many users are connected to, to the VPN, uh, and then to, to be able to read all accounting data, so to be able to, to view uh, who is connected to the VPN, for how many times it's connected, uh, and uh, yeah, even in the past, uh, uh, all the information about uh, accounting data. Okay. Then uh, we're going to come the the tricky part because uh, 
If you have to, to play with PDTP, RTTP, you have to play with Microsoft too. So, uh, the first problem was that uh, uh, the, in the VPN, uh, there was a, in the config, in IPCP configuration, there was a file that the DNS uh, used. The main problem was that the computer, uh, which is connected to the Windows 2003 server, uh, if the VPN uh, gives a, 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 a DNS server, it uses by default this DNS server. So it can resolve no more the internal server. And if I uh, configure the internal server, uh, the ones that connect to the other office cannot use the internal server. So uh, it was easily fixed by uh, uh, not setting any DNS and Microsoft uses the, the one configured in the other interface. The other problem was, well, I was stuck for a lot of time, time with that, because uh, when the computer started, it authenticates uh, through Active Directory. Uh, with the server, it's a uh, carrier's ticket. Uh, the other interface is the, as the standard N2, so it has a other N2. And the carrier uh, ticket speeds in 1,502. Then the computer uh, connected to the VPN. The VPN as a standard has a uh, 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 the, the client for, I don't know which reason, changed the entry of the internet interface. So after 15 minutes, uh, the Windows Server tried to renew the keep the Kerberos ticket. It doesn't fit no more on the MTU. It thinks that there is a middle 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 attack and it is able to your account in the active directory. <laughs> so you have to disconnect to the to the VPN. Uh, the other interface uh, uh, changes its MTU to the default one to thousand five hundred. Uh, the Kerberos ticket uh, got renewed. And then you can reconnect uh, for, to the VPN for other 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then all things start. <laughs> well, in the very end, uh, the, all the workaround was to set the uh, VPN uh, NQ interface to 1500, uh, which is, was the, the faster solution. The other solution could be to change uh, all computers uh, NQ, which is crazy. Uh, or uh, to call Microsoft for support to fix uh, something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is not a joke. Uh, uh, on my office, uh, I have uh, um, a VPN which is uh, uh, behind uh, a router which uh, uh, which has not. Uh, I try to set up my LTTP VPN, but it fails. I try to do that issue. Uh, at the very uh, end, I found a Microsoft article which said uh, in uh, uh, Microsoft uh, XP uh, Service Pack 1, we have NAT-T support. Uh, but uh, it was a bit buggy. So in uh, uh, with Windows XP Service Pack 2, we completely disabled NAT support. Uh, so, if you want to uh, enable NAT support in Windows, uh, at least with in 7, don't know, I've never tried Windows 8, you have to, to change this uh, uh, key registry, uh, which is uh, hard to remember, and uh, you have to change the reward value from 0 to uh, one if your client is behind the NAT and to two if your client and your server is behind the NAT. Uh, anyway, uh, HTTP uh, is uh, it's a bit slow. Uh, maybe because uh, uh, at least uh, from the test I had, uh, it was, uh, um, I was using AES uh, mod P so he has strong crypto and uh, well I have a quite a laptop uh, I have a horrible internet connection 
connection, so it's, it's not far usable for a day-to-day -day use. Uh, PPTP uh, is uh, less secure than LED FTP, but uh, you can you can use it for a daily use. This customer is using every day. Uh, he has uh, every computer, uh, every laptop uh, is going to the main server and it's working quite well. Okay, uh, the future of MPPD uh, will be well, first fixing bugs. I have some in my to do, to commit uh, list. Uh, a better integration with PF. Uh, we thought about uh, filtering by group of users, uh, uh, maybe by adding uh, a group uh, in the um, uh, radius and user definition uh, and then adding uh, the group interface uh, to the PBX uh, uh, interface, uh, maybe by adding a tag uh, in PF, but we have to discuss with PF guys uh, to think uh, which is to be the best solution. Uh, one other thing that definitely is missing uh, is hard cache support. Uh, this means that uh, uh, at the moment uh, you have to separate the uh, LAN subnet of your LAN <coughs> the subnet of your VPN users. You cannot share. Uh, to be able to share your uh, one segment from VPN and one, you have to, uh, to enable up cache support, which at the moment is, there's no code for it. Uh, it also, there was uh, last year a, a great review of all the stuff, uh, a lot of bug fixes, uh, and in October has been uh, committed uh, with finally. Uh, with uh, map pages uh, like uh, some months before uh, there were the, finally the, the comments in the code in quite English which was well, far better than Japan and uh, uh, we will try to to use uh, and to think about other things to to add because I think it's a great piece of software. Uh, it would, mm -hmm. at least for the user one part, I think it would not be too difficult to port it to some other BSD. Because uh, uh, I think the, uh, the IPsec stack is quite insane. Uh, so it's not that uh, too complicated.